Hi, welcome to my channel, Cardiology and Beyond. This is Dr. Sonali, an interventional cardiologist from India. Today, I'll be talking about an effect most commonly seen during echocardiography called the Coanda effect, and it's specifically useful when we are trying to assess eccentric mitral regurgitation jets. When you look at it overall, it's a pretty small aspect of a larger question of evaluation of mitral regurgitation jets on an echocardiogram. However, it is still very interesting and has a lot of applications. So let us begin by asking, what is this Coanda effect? It was discovered in 1930 by Henry Coanda, who was an aircraft engineer, and it has a lot of applications in aerodynamics. In other words, it is known as the wall attachment effect. What it means is that it indicates the tendency of a moving fluid, either a liquid or a gas, to attach itself to a surface and flow along with it. As the fluid moves across a surface, a certain amount of friction occurs between the fluid and the surface. This is what happens here, and it slows this fluid down. The resistance to flow pulls this fluid towards the surface and the fluid tends to stick onto this convex surface. So coming back to the same diagram, the moving column of fluid entrains molecules lying close to this curved surface and it creates an area of relatively low pressure over here. On the other hand, pressure away from the curved surface is relatively higher and the fluid column, as a result, is pushed downwards towards this curved surface rather than this fluid continuing in a straight course. So an interesting experiment tries to explain this Coanda effect or the wall attachment effect is that if you have a candle and an object which is placed in front of the candle, and if you happen to blow from behind this object, you would expect that the air molecules would get deflected by this object and move away from the candle. However, in reality, this is not what happens. What happens is the air molecules tend to stick to this object and then follow this course and finally do end up extinguishing the candle. So this effect is because of the Coanda effect, because of which the atmospheric pressure, which is relatively higher, tends to push down this column of air onto the surface of this object, hence leading to a Coanda effect or a wall attachment effect. Let us see what do birds teach us about the Coanda effect. Now, when a bird takes off before getting into flight, it attacks the air by holding its wings at a slight angle with the horizontal of around 3 to 5 degrees, and this angle is known as the angle of attack. Now, when the angle of attack is more than 5 degrees, eddies are produced around its wings instead of laminar flow, and eddies indicate turbulence. So, when there is turbulence or eddy formation, it is harmful to flight, and in effect, it leads to stalling of flight or stalling of the liftoff. Now, this is the structure of one of the wings of a bird. It is in this particular structure called the aerofoil structure with a curved surface, convex on top and concave below. And such a curved surface is designed by nature to give the most favorable ratio of lift to drag in order to facilitate the bird in flight. So as I mentioned before, when the angle of attack is less than 5 degrees, the air around the wing is extremely laminar and streamlined. However, when the angle of attack is more than 5 degrees, eddies or countercurrents are produced as, as it is seen here, which tends to stop the lift or the takeoff of the bird. You must be wondering why am I still talking about birds, but wait for it. In order to deal with the eddies that are produced, there is a magic wing in birds called the alula. It is present at the third digit of every bird and it is a small wing, here you can see here. And as compared to the big primary and the secondary feathers, the, this is the small feather called the alula or a small wing called the alula. So what this particular alula does is that it gently lifts and changes the contour of the entire wing structure. And 
by doing that it causes effacement of eddies so that even when the angle of attack is greater than 5 degrees it allows the eddies to go away by making the air stick onto the wing surface again. So in a way Alula the magic wing is causing a coanda effect causing the air to stick onto the wing surface and creating a laminar flow to facilitate takeoff. What is the role of the Coanda effect in aircrafts? Now, just like the birds, the aircraft industry also made its wing to be shaped like an aerofoil. And essentially, there are various reasons why lift occurs when there is a greater pressure below the wing as compared to a relatively lower pressure above the wing. One of the reasons is because of compressed air below compared to rarefied air above, leading to a pressure difference. And hence a generation of lift. However, all of this would not have happened if there would have not been coanda effect. Coanda effect leads to the sticking of these air molecules onto the surface of the wing, hence leading to an effective lift. So if there would have been no coanda effect, there would have been no lift and as a result, no flying from one country to another. Now finally, let's come to cardiology. If the applications of coanda effect in birds and aircraft industry made sense, then it's extremely easy when it comes to our own hearts. Now this is an example of a mitral regurgitation jet which I had shown in the last uh, video in which we have an acute MR caused by these vegetations and it is leading to an eccentric jet in which the jet is directed towards the posterior wall of the left atrium. So the coanda effect is a useful reminder of the differences between a central jet of mitral regurgitation and an eccentric jet of mitral regurgitation. When you have a central MR, it is pretty simple and straightforward to define its severity, whether it is mild, moderate or severe, and to quantify the amount of regurgitation volume. However, when it comes to an eccentric MR jet, it becomes quite difficult to estimate its true severity. It often leads to an underestimation of MR severity. With an eccentric MR jet, because of the presence of this coanda effect that we've seen so far, the blood column tends to stick onto the LA wall. What happens as a result is that this eccentric jet becomes difficult to detect and quite often it appears smaller than it actually is. When you have a coanda effect onto this jet, there's a loss of energy due to the low pressure of this effect. As we've seen, the sticking molecules tend to reduce the pressure at this surface. And as a result, because of this loss of energy, a low velocity is also imparted to this jet. So what happens is when you have an initial turbulence or an initial mosaic pattern, it suddenly co gets converted into a laminar flow as you can see here. So this is a blue laminar flow followed by a red laminar flow. Now, of course, when it comes to echocardiography, the color sequences simply mean the direction of the blood flow. We have our probe over here. So when the blood flow is away from the probe, that is in this direction, away from it, the color imparted to the blood is blue. And when the blood has a direction towards this probe, then the color imparted is red. Well, whatever the color that it may have, the crux of the matter is that instead of the usual mosaic pattern of a turbulent jet, this jet suddenly gets converted into a laminar flow. So you start wondering whether this jet is really severe or not. But paradoxically, even though there is a laminar flow to this jet, it does not mean that the MR is not severe. The clue to the presence of an eccentric severe MR jet is the fact that there is the presence of a laminar flow in the same phase as a turbulent flow. What does that mean? When you have a systole, and that's when MR is produced, a systolic MR is produced, you are expected to have turbulence throughout systole. But when it comes to an eccentric jet, if you see both turbulence as well as laminar flow in the same phase, then we know that it is an eccentric jet whose 
velocity has dropped to such a low level that it has gotten converted into a laminar flow and this has essentially led to the swirling of blood as it has led to sticking of the blood molecules onto this LA wall, this lateral LA wall, then the posterior LA wall and the blood has swirled within the left atrium. So you have to remember that laminar jets indicate low velocity, but in no way do they indicate a low severity of MR. In fact, they indicate a higher severity of MR when the laminar jets are seen in the same phase as a turbulent eccentric jet. Finally, does the Quanda effect play a role in supravalvular aortic stenosis? Now, in supravalvular AS, the blood jet impinges on the right-sided wall of the aorta directed towards the innominate artery with a preferential flow of blood towards the right subclavian and the right common carotid arteries. This leads to unequal blood pressure in the upper limbs with the right arm systolic BP being greater than the left arm systolic blood pressure. As always, like, share, subscribe, comment and press the bell icon and I'll see you next time with another video.